Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Lord Exus and I'd like to welcome you all to Dark Souls Prepare to Die Edition. Now I would like to first apologise, I haven't done a video for a few weeks, Christmas time has been a very busy time so I haven't had time to upload, but I thought during this lovely joyous time of year where everyone gets to have a good time and spend it with their families, uh, there's more than enough Christmas joy going around, so why not spread some darkness and despair? And that is exactly what Dark Souls is all about. And so that's what I'm going to be doing. Now, contrary to pop popular belief, I have had little to nothing to do with the Dark Souls series. Uh, there is a few videos, I think like two maybe up on the channel, of me fucking around with Dark Souls 2. Nothing major. And that's because I've always, I've, I've always had a bit of a... Uh, I don't know, distant fascination with it, although I can never really get into it myself because I like my storytelling and my uh, fantasy RPGs kind of to show me what's going on on the surface. I want the story usually right in my face. And to a lesser degree, I also don't want my ass handed to me at every single turn. And of course, Dark Souls and by extension, the spiritual prequel, Demon's Souls on the PlayStation 3, and the other not so much spin-offs but other series by or series by uh by from software bloodborne i've also done on the channel which i had very little success with but yeah i've uh, mainly stayed away due to the basis that although i consider myself a hardcore rpg gamer this is beyond the hardcore and to find out the story and to be satisfied with the content that's going on you kind of need to read every item description and then realise where the story is going yourself rather than it being put right in front of your face. Also, this game and this series of games demands that you become that good at the mechanics that you, you become a master. You need to become a master. You're not completing this game. You're not even getting very far if you don't know what you're doing. You don't really acclimate to the state of play as you go. Uh, but yeah, I've been watching a few videos, not anything that would give away anything for me and that's again why I'm starting with the first game in the series on my PC because I kind of want to get a feel for it. I did play a little bit of two that was not my first foray into it but as I have not played any one of these games for more than an hour. Uh, simply on the basis I had a lot of other games to cover, a lot of other games I wanted to play and that were more story related, more what I wanted to do. So that's what I've done. Um, but I always did want to come back to this and did really want to give myself one of those ass kicking challenges that after it's done, you can sit there and go, wow, yeah, uh, you know what, I've done that. And although now they're not considered as hard, many people have cleared them. I've watched enough of the rage videos online to be like, wow, that actually looks like after you've done that, like you've more or less got a sense of achievement that you are one of, okay, there's still maybe several thousands people in the world that have done this multiple times but still you don't get games like that anymore and that's what uh was the premise of these games is hardcore japanese or i'm not sure if it's korean i know from software isn't but i believe it's, it's japanese predominantly hardcore old school role-playing games in the sense that it makes you work for it you have to be good um some of the things that those of you that never looked at a dark souls game before don't really know what it was or what it is, sorry, other than uh, old school sort of Western medieval fantasy, dragons, undead, zombies, nasty, nasty creatures of every single trope and type. <clears throat> it works on the mechanic that you proceed for an area, the next area you get to, in order to bookmark or checkpoint your progress, you must reach a bonfire. When the bonfire is light, lit, and you can sit down and you can rest and you get your potions uh in this game i believe they're known as estus flasks you get them re uh restocked and uh you can then carry on from that point you can also level up and uh mess around with your stats at this bonfire and uh yeah then carry on from there the downside to that is or the upside depending on how you look at it is every enemy other than elite mobs or special enemies mini bosses and bosses up until that point are then resurrected so from a bad standpoint, you're not going to be wandering back through the areas you've already been through too often unless you know for a fact there's something you've missed or you want to grind and level up some more. Uh, yeah, that's kind of uh, the downside to that. The plus side to that, of course, is 
if you want to go and farm experience points in this game and the whole games in the series, known as Souls, you the enemies come back, so you can therefore go back and do that. Um, that is not necessarily the most difficult learning curve of the game, but that is one of the uh, learning curves of this game. Everything resurrects, and it, it the game wants to punish you, but it wants you to become good at doing what the game is about. It wants you to be a master of it, and it rewards you for doing so. So, that is what I'm going to try and do. That is what I want to get into and see how far I get. Now, I've talked to a few friends, and I may be punished. People people may not like this as such, but in every fantasy RPG, whether it be dark or otherwise, I play as a mage or a caster. That is what I do. That is my favourite class. Now, supposedly in Dark Souls... This is a big double-sided coin. Uh, most professional players, since I've seen some comments online, would consider this easy mode, uh, so to speak, because you can stand back and try to, and not have to really respond to anything and just blast magic. And then the flip side of the coin is, you don't start off with a lot of magic and you don't have MP or mana, you have amount of casts. So, once you're out, if you, if you want to be the sort of magic user I usually am, which is full glass cannon, where you stab back and just blast everything to death, but you get hit once and you're pretty much dead. Um, that's a big problem for me, because number one, finding magic is hard enough in this if you don't know what you're doing, and in which case, between videos, I will definitely be either looking at other videos or guides in order to at least find my way around to finding other magics. The, the progressive route to getting through the game, that's a little bit different. That I should be able to find on my own. But specifically, finding other magics and vendors in order to sell me them or provide me them, that will be a different matter. Those I will have to uh, have to look up on how to find because this game is, I'm assuming, is not going to be straightforward with how I how I progress and how I get them. So uh, yeah, so that's a double-sided coin. Uh, <clears throat> so yeah, I'll get a bit of criticism for going the mage route, but mage has always been my thing, always will. Uh, back when I done a few videos on Dark Souls 2 and just tried the game out and have tried a little bit on this. Not, not my PC, not with this copy of the game, but have tried a little bit in the past. I mean, back during the Xbox 360 generation when this first came out. Uh, yeah, I, I, I just tried Warrior. I don't think it was dual wielding. I think it was like a Wanderer, like a guy, a, a light armoured guy, so I could dodge more. And this is going to be the other, the other side of the coin with uh, a mage or a caster. It's going to be the fact that um, if an enemy gets close to you, there's two things you need to be able to do, or one of two. You either need to be able to block their attacks with a shield um, to make sure they can't damage you because especially as a mage with light armor you're going to die very quickly or you need to be able to dodge with a B button which means your weight on your character needs to be very light because you're not going to be able to roll substantially and get that invisibility frame sorry invincibility frame so yeah those are the two things we're gonna have to do uh, nothing else on this disclaimer the only other thing I have to say is Dark Souls 1 this specific game was an absolute garbage fire of a port. It was made originally by From Software for the consoles, the gaming consoles of that generation. It took a, a huge amount of, uh, I wouldn't say bribery, but um, a huge amount of petitioning from fans, from hardcore PC gamers, for them to actually ever port it over to the PC. And they did. <clears throat> and it was rubbish. Uh, the resolution was wank. The frame weight rate was, again, an absolute garbage fire, and the game didn't look good, it wasn't presented good, and you couldn't move good. Um, luckily, the hardcore fan base universally got behind someone that done uh, a patch or mod called DS Fix, Dark Souls Fix. I am running that on this version of the game. I have patched that myself, or whatever you want to call it, modded it myself, in order to do that. I, I have no problem admitting that. I am not having this game looking like absolute toilet, running like absolute toilet, so I am unable to play it properly. So yeah, that is on, that is implemented. I've done everything I can to get it as running and working as well as possible. So DS Fix is on this, uh, and it looks fine. Unfortunately, you won't be able to necessarily see the 60 frames a second because I should be able to use my editor again on this. So therefore, you will be seeing 30 frames a second, but at least you'll get the best, or more or less, the best possible quality. Uh, yeah, so I think that's about it. So without any more being said, I'm going to...
give you the luxury of not having to see me create my character because all of them look like fucking feet anyway because they're just all ridiculously ugly, especially in this original game. And uh, yeah, I'm going to cut to the next bit, which should be the intro scene of the game. Hopefully my video editor works because otherwise I'll just waste 10 minutes talking to you guys. Anyway, hope everyone's having a good Christmas period. It's about time we get fucking festive, hey guys? Let's play some Dark Souls. In the age of ancients, the world was unformed, shrouded by fog. A land of grey crags, arch trees, and everlasting dragons. But then there was fire, and was fire came disparity, heat and cold, life and death, and of course, light and dark. Then from the dark they came and found the souls of lords within the flame. Nito, the first of the dead. The witch of Isolith and her daughters of chaos. Gwyn, the Lord of Sunlight, and his faithful knights, and the furtive pygmy, so easily forgotten. With the strength of lords, they challenged the dragons. Wind's mighty gods pulled apart their stone skins. The witches weaved great firestorms. Nito unleashed a miasma of death and disease. And Seath the scales betrayed his own, and the dragons were no more. will fade, and only dark will remain. Even now, there are only embers, and man sees not light, but only endless nights. And amongst the living are seen Carriers of the accursed dark side. Yes, indeed. The dark sign brands the undead. And in this land, the undead are corralled and led to the north. Where they are locked away to await the end of the world. This is your fate.
Okay, so this is where our game begins. That was a nice little intro, five minutes long, uh, and with some really intense characters and lore building there. I couldn't tell you what a lot of it was about, but uh, it seems that we are placed here, and uh, we, for whatever reason, uh, and please excuse the very gay hat, I will remove that, unless it does anything I actually need it to do. Uh, it does actually do stuff, so I'm going to have to keep it on, which is a shame. Uh, done my custom character off screen, and yeah, we were introduced to the basic lore of this world. Everything was in darkness, the dragons ruled, and then the fire came. And for some reason, that made the hugest amount of difference. Life and death, uh, light and darkness, all that good stuff. So, again, I created my character. This is my sorcerer. That is the archetypal caster in this game. And again, I'm running DS Fix, so this game is running at 60 frames a second and looking beautiful. I don't know why From Software never actually managed to do an update that actually incorporated all of that rather than it having to be third party, but hey. Uh, yeah, so we met Gwyn, Nito, and uh, the Witch Queen of Izar Izanef or something, what that said. And they are like the epic subhuman people of this world that claimed the world back against the dragons and used the fire for their own means. And all we know is we are undead, which is, if we look at my guy here, he is very fucking undead, because that's not how he looked when I created him. So, <clears throat> we're undead. And this kingdom we're in, it hasn't stated at the part at the beginning of the game, but I know for a fact it's called Londor. Uh, yeah, Londor. Um, and this is almost a limbo-like world, uh, where you come, where you die. Which is odd. Because from that guy who threw this body down here... There seems to be living humans here as well. As you can see, in my top item bar, as I'm pressing on it now, I do have a spell. Unfortunately, with this broken dagger in my hand, or, sorry, broken sword, um, I don't have a capability of casting that, because you need a catalyst. You require a weapon in this, in this game to uh, cast, and this weapon is not the right one. So, luckily, I can dodge. No, it... Is going to keep me alive until I can get something to cast with. So let's open this. Let's move on. This is a third person, so this is not a first person like a uh, like uh, Skyrim or any of the Elder Scrolls games. Although they can be in both. It looks okay. To be fair, I I own the second and third one on PC. They look a lot better. From Software done a lot better. This was a request. This game was by uh, gamers to be on PC. So yeah. We target, I mean, these messages will tell us, uh, right bumper is attack. It doesn't tell us how to target yet, but that's down on the right thumbstick. So we just swing with a light attack. That's right bumper. And that'll kill him. That's enough to kill him. And you saw that white, I mean, the fuck. You see that big thing in there? We are not ready for that yet. Um, <clears throat> yeah. You saw, uh, though, that, that, like, thing drain off him. That was his soul. His soul was worth 20. So that's our experience points. Experience points will be banked with us until the point we sit and rest at a bonfire. When we do so, we can choose to level up with them. Uh, if we die before that, they are lost. Unless you get back to the place where your corpse fell on the first try, then you can retrieve the souls and you are free to die again without losing them. However, if you do not make your way back to where your corpse was and retrieve your experience point, aka souls, they will be lost forever. And that is another thing people hate about this game. I personally think that's a cool system. Right, let's just uh, get for these. And as you can see, every time I swing, my green bar in the top left goes down. That is your stamina. Um, luckily, later on, I'll be relying on uh, mainly magic. Uh, left stick plus B equals dash, which it does. It makes you run faster, but also drains your stamina. So, let's move on. We are in the Undead Asylum, which is basically a tutorializing area of the game. Uh, R stick, lock target and release, which it does, and it does very well. It makes you circle around the target, which is can be a little bit difficult with multiple targets. However, a quick flick left or right or up and down of the thumbstick will allow you to target the enemies all around, so it's not that much of a deal. And although that looked slow to everyone, for this game, that is quick. That is quick. This movement is very quick. In some games, any RPG you'd have motions that are much quicker than that. This game is based, think of, like, people don't compare it to Dungeons and Dragons, but think of that with 
even more difficult because that's what it's about it's about making you be as real as you can be they wanted that sense of this isn't just fantasy this is real as well you suffer from all of the conditions and if not worse than what a real life person would you are only human and in fact this case we're undead we're even worse so anyway if you come out here and I, I know this beginning generalized area of the game because I've, I've played enough to know this and researched enough to know these things it's again not something I have a huge amount of experience here don't worry you will be seeing me die soon and it will bring you much joy considering I consider myself an experienced gamer you will be loving this and I will enjoy it too because nothing gets me slightly more convinced of having a decent murder boner than actually being murdered in game so we'll light the bonfire that's good bonfire let these as I stated earlier are checkpoints at the moment all we can do is attune magic and of course I've already got soul arrow attuned into one of the slots I'll explain why that is important later right there is a secondary route down there we can't get in from this direction I know that much so we'll go through here And this is one thing most people had trouble dealing with the first time they ever played Dark Souls is sometimes Dark Souls wants you to die. If we run in here, this thing appears. You cannot fight this right now, you're not capable. See, ow! So you run to the left. That gate's just behind you. You don't have to deal with it anymore. Apparently people just keep trying... You, it is possible to kill it. It is actually possible to kill it. But there's no need right now. You're not meant to specifically right now. So, to give you another bonfire very quickly. Later on, this becomes a pain in the ass because bonfires are very spread apart. Let's read what this message has to say. And a, th a thing about these messages: this is not a tutorializing system. This is a system that used to get uh, gets you used to what Dark Souls considers online play. Online play in this game has a thing called world invasion, where people from other copies of their game will invade your game. Uh, in order to kill you and they'll get an uh, equivalent drop of what you're holding. They don't take your items from you, you keep them. Uh, if you manage to defend against them, you'll get the equivalent drop from their items and so on and so forth. And if you invade, vice versa. Uh, the original Dark Souls in this one, I doubt I'll be getting invaded by anyone while I do these playthroughs and while I show this to you guys. Uh, simply on the basis is that I don't know if anyone even bothers playing the original Dark Souls anymore. Especially on PC, I have no idea. So... We probably won't get that, and we won't get that this early anyway. That'll be a little bit later on. And you must, uh, as far as I remember, you must be human in order to for that to happen. So that's not going to happen because at the moment we are full undead, which is known as being closer to hollow. That'll be explained. Uh, actually, that can be explained here. And this is another thing, like I stated, when it comes down to the lore of this game and how the world is building, the game isn't going to give us shit. We have to discover it for ourselves, which is which is a complete anagram for the way Dark Souls goes. It gives you nothing easily. It tells you, you are going to master this in order to become better. You want to know about this game? You want to learn it? We're going to give you the very basics. You must learn it yourself. You will master it yourself, and you will either carry on yourself, or you will fall by the wayside like so many people have. And one of the things it does in terms of story it gives you that general premise we saw that intense five minute cutscene at the beginning other than that it expects us to learn and understand ourselves and if you go into items and you look at some items I mean I've got a, a black separation crystal for no apparent reason uh, banish phantom return home that's a PvP item I can tell you that much a phantom will invade my world at some point I can hit that up and just banish the phantom away um, and that'll be another player coming to kill me specifically to earn rewards and I'll have it to be fight back against them not being funny, I'm not ready for that. I mean, I'm all right at PvP and MMOs, but I sign up for that shit when I sign up for that shit. I don't want them just invading me. Uh, so, yeah, we don't know how that's going to go. So, but the one thing is, if you go to toggle display, it'll give you an item description to tell you more about the world. So, this black crystal, long a symbol of farewell, is granted to banished undead. The crystal sends phantoms back to their homes or sends you back to yours. Beware of fickle use of this item if you intend to nurture relations so again it's, it's uh, that's a pvp thing uh but if we look at the dark sign that was mentioned in the beginning of the game in the intro the dark side signifies an accursed undead those branded with with it are reborn after death but will one day lose their mind and go hollow death triggers the dark sign 
which returns its bearer to the last bonfire rescue at, at the cost of all humanity and souls. Now, both humanity, uh, souls being the experience we earn in the game to level up, humanity being something slightly different, it is used to return us to our human form, gaining a slightly more HP, and I believe uh, opening up other options. I can't remember specifically what. Again, I have not actually fully played any of these games more than an hour. So. I'm reading through all of the descriptions, uh, not just for you guys, but in order to get me acquainted. So we have the master key. This is what I chose in my gift. You get to choose a gift at the beginning. I hate unlocked doors. Usually the master key is a gift already awarded to the thief class at the beginning of the game. I want to be able to access as much as everywhere as I can because that seems to be a thing with this game and the other Dark Souls games is certain paths being locked, certain items being locked off, certain... Uh, certain shortcuts being locked with this key this will as far as I know remain infinite so therefore I can unlock the doors that require the universal master key uh, so this universal key opens basic lock tools of the trade for thieves but in the cursed land of the undead most doors are better left unopened no true word has been said we've also got the dungeon cell key which that random guy who dropped the undead in allowed us to get out of anyway enough explanation let's move on so there's a scar up there I want to avoid him for now because he's going to be shooting arrows and I will take the small level shield uh, there you go this game is telling us what to do which is rare because it's very fucking rare for a Dark Souls game to actually give you anything like it but they give you the basics the very basics so we go across the right bumper we go into this menu and I know it's weird for a mage to have a shield but trust trust this is going to happen a mage having a shield is not a bad thing. So this guy, yeah, he's gonna fucking run away, bitch. So right, as a mage, our first weapon is actually gonna be a dagger. Does still does a lot more damage than the. Uh, let's get a close look at our guy. Look at that shit. That is a face not even a mother would want to kill because she wouldn't want to go near it. Um. Okay, so we've got a dagger. So we've actually got a weapon. It's a shit weapon. But it's a weapon that can hit. We need to kill this guy. And, uh, yeah. We need to make this happen. So, yeah, able to kill him, but it took my whole stamina bar, and then I wouldn't have been able to move anymore or press it. So, we need to get through here, and I need to find a catalyst in order to be able to use Soul Arrow, because I it won't let me use Soul Arrow. Not with a dagger. So, trans transverse the white light. Okay. Okay, so. Ah, okay, so there's a guy in there. Uh, Dark Souls. The, uh, From Software are very clever with the level design because there's multiple ways to everything. Now, we can't get up here, but that guy has a soul. So I'm going to. If we look up there, there is some sort of. There must be some sort of way around to these stairs. So we're going to do that. We're going to do that in a bit. Uh, first, we need to go around here. So. As you can see, and again, I, I am not, I would not lie, I'm admitting this, this wall looks dodgy. I have done this section of the game before. I've done at least the tutorial. So, go up here, this rolls down, we, oh, it still hit me. Oh, I thought I could get out of the way in time. Uh, and that manages to power through this wall, so we go in here. Hello, Mr. Knight. Let's talk to this guy. Oh, you. You're no hollow. Thank goodness. I'm done for, I'm afraid. I'll die soon, then lose my sanity. I wish to ask something of you. You and I were both undead. Hear me out, will you? And why not? I don't see why we shouldn't hear the guy out, so, uh, yes. Regrettably, I have failed in my mission. Okay, Sir Knight. But perhaps you can keep the torch lit. There is an old saying in my family. Thou who art undead art chosen. In thine exodus from the undead asylum, maketh pilgrimage to the land of ancient lords. When thou ringeth the bell of awakening, the fate of the undead thou shalt know. Well, now you know. And I can die with hope in my heart. Oh, one more thing. Here, take this. An Estus flask, an undead favorite. Okay, thank you, Sir Knight. Oh, and this. 
Ah, uh, the Undead Asylum, F2 Eastern Key. No, so. I must bid farewell. Okay. I would hate to harm you after death. So go now, and thank you. Okay. Okay, so he is on his way. He's very calm about it, I grant him that. So now, on the bottom of the D-pad, we have five Estus Flasks. I believe when we get to the next section of the game, that is increased to ten, and I believe there's also a way to increase the potency of them. But for now, I'm going to drink one of them, because I've lost some life. So there you go. Down to four Estus Flasks, but yeah, that fucking ball. Anywho. Right, a few things to uh, do around here. I believe a shortcut. Okay, I heard something squenchy there, but this shortcut... There we go. Okay, something died. Oh, that was him because he was dying to. So, leads back to this bonfire. So, we've opened the shortcut to that. And this game has very intricate level design. And it does. And all of the Dark Souls games do have all of that. The looping background, finding secret shortcuts. Fuck you. Oh, ran into that, dick. There we go. Dealt with. Okay. It's only a little bit of damage. Right, so that key opened up this gate. So we go through here and uh, kick, jump attack. Yeah, the, the buttons for this game are very weird because everything everything on your L trigger is the left of your body. Everything on your right trigger, trigger is the right of your body. Which it was new at the time. But anyway, we need to come here because we need this. The Sorcerer's Catalyst. I am a sorcerer. Therefore, I need a catalyst. And the catalyst will be my second D-pad weapon. So I go over to there. Oh, and it's all about to go down like Donkey Kong. I have a staff now. Staff and a shield. So, if this works right... Oh, one shot there. And we have access to our first spell, the Soul Arrow. And that's exactly what I wanted. And this is where, if anyone's watching, anyone blows up in the comments, Oh, you're playing it on easy mode because you're a mage. I like the mage class. I didn't ask for the mage class to be easy mode. Screw you, buddy. Ah, oh, still got here. What dick. Unfortunately, spells take time to cast, so that's the thing. Right. I don't know what's through here, I'll be honest. Oh, hello. You're through here. Have some, have some magic. And another one. And another one. Uh, when they put their shield up, they are defended against it, so it cost me some more charges than I would have liked. However, it's locked. Oh, you dickbag. Well, where is the key to unlock that? Ah, maybe I'll have to come round after the next bit. And this next bit is the key bit. If you ever see a barrier like this that's grey fog, or in this case, in this game, the white light, I believe it becomes grey mist or something later in the uh, next game. It is usually, not always, but usually a boss fight. So I changed to the dagger in order to go down, because I know what happens now. It's the Asylum Demon, and we drop down. So we do that first. Right, and then we change to that. And then we back the fuck up. And we start hitting this thing with magic. Oh, you dick. Stay away. This is why they consider this easy mode, I guess, because you can just gank from a distance. Dodge! I'm not into you, you're pretty fucking hideous. Stay the fella. And we're done. The Asylum Demon's dead. I've beaten the first, well, supposed boss of the game. It's not, it's the tutorial boss. So, dealt with. We've got the big pilgrim's key. It's weird, because I don't know what that sound is. But it's big. You hear that, right? And we got our first humanity. Now, we, we meant to go out this door. This door takes us to the next part of the game. But since I've got the new big key, I want to see if I can go around to that other way and claim that last soul. So we just go around here. And it is back up this way. So again, yeah. Uh, people will be... A little bit annoyed if I'm doing a, a, a caster run, a sorcerer run. Uh, again, I have Steve, Steve, listen, I told you it was just that one night. Leave me alone. We don't get clingy. Okay, forget it ever happened. Anyway, um, yeah, 
uh, annoyed about the sorcerer run because they consider the mage user or the magic thing like a cop out. I don't know why. It's locked. No, that key doesn't open that. So how do we? That's interesting. Someone might know something I don't. Well, someone will know something I don't because I can't claim to be a pro in any way, shape, or form at this game. Not at all. I mean, I'm having to go into here just to uh, just to look at item descriptions to find out the law. I have no idea what is actually going on in this world. I know we're undead. I know we're in a form of purgatory slash limbo. That is what Londor is it Londor? Oh no, sorry, Lordoran. Lordoran is the name of this kingdom of medieval fantasy. Uh, yeah. It's some sort of kingdom of limbo. Uh, and apart from what we saw at the beginning and the intro, I can't tell you much more. Okay, so this humanity. This black sprite is called humanity, but little is known about its true nature. If the soul of the source of all life, sorry, if the soul of source of all life, then what distinguishes the humanity we hold within ourselves? Good question. Good question, game. So I'm just going to sprint back. Again, stamina and uses. I now have 16 uses of soul arrow, so I used I like half of them to defeat that, uh, that enemy. If I go back this way, again, I don't really know what key I need. Is there something I'm missing? Is there something down here? No. Cause sometimes there's. I know there's like traps and invisible walls and all sorts of shit in this game. So. There must, there must be a way to up there. Um, no, I have no idea, ladies and gentlemen. Maybe someone knows something I don't. Uh, someone definitely knows something I do not. But, um, yeah. Yeah, so... We'll go back through the sewers and come out the bottom. Because then we can just go straight through to where we're going to be, so... That's all good. So we didn't have difficulty doing that, and neither should we. Neither should we. I don't know why I'm going around the long way. There was another shortcut back there that would have been just as easy to take. But anyway. And I'm so glad I also downloaded and uh, patched the DS fix thing. There's, there's a few little bit of tweaks. I'm not the most computer expert guy in the world. But uh, it, it managed to make it a little bit better. So, that noise. What was that? Because I know we we did we saw a different asylum demon at the beginning, right? Down in these pits. Is it still there? Is it still present? I don't know if there's any way. Oh shit! Okay, that took a little bit of help off. Oh, hello. You are back. Why didn't you die? Better. Is that what's making the noise? I kind of need to know now. Sorry guys, just running back to the beginning of the game here. You're going to be seeing something new and interesting. Yeah, it's still here. Okay. So, I don't know if that's a mob you can ever get to. I don't know if you can fight that. That's basic. That's the boss. That's the asylum demon. I don't know whether that's a carbon copy of that being here because it needs to. I have no idea. I can't tell you. Uh, so, that's what, at least that's what that noise was. Obviously, it's maybe do somehow directly under where we were which it shouldn't be considering the geographical location but hey hey video games I'm no expert so okay let's go back up and let's uh, go on to where we're meant to be because we only have 11 soul arrows left so 11 casts of magic that I so much love could rest at the bonfire I don't need everything to come back though let's move on yeah it must be directly underneath us don't know how to get through there, but we'll uh, push these really heavy doors open. Okay. <clears throat> so. Uh, good job. Go straight ahead. Well, thank you, From Software. I'm assuming that's uh, direct notes from the development team rather than actual people. Okay. Okay, so let's move on, guys. Let's move on. Only. In the ancient legends, it is stated that one day an undead shall be chosen. To leave the undead asylum in pilgrimage to the land of the ancient lords. 
Lordran. In Lordran, level up at Kindled Bonfires. So I've been led to believe, although I wouldn't know, and believe me, I've tested this a few times and got this far in order to make the PC version of this game look as good as it can because it looked like ass before. I don't know why after all these years they didn't bother fixing it. I mean, 2011 this game was, 2011, 2010 this game was originally released. They've had six years, but obviously they've made new games since then. New Souls games, so they didn't bother. So the fix has increased. I mean, the backgrounds are still way out and still look a little blurry. However, they the, the DS fix does a lot, and considering it's nothing more than a glorified text dump, it does well. So anyway, with that being said, we are now in Lordoran, uh, which I believe the Undead Asylum was in Lordoran anyway, but we're in Lordoran proper, and this is the Firelink Shrine, which is going to become a hub as such. So we'll rest at the bonfire. I don't want to do anything here other than rest to make sure I have. Get my now I have ten Estus flasks. Uh, I'm not going to claim. I'm not going to pop a humanity and claim my uh, my humanity back yet. And you'll you guys will see what that is momentarily. First, we'll talk to this geezer. He's just sitting here chilling out in his really. And this is how bad this game looks. Look at that shitty chainmail armor. That doesn't even look like proper chainmail armor. It's like he's wearing a glittery shirt and trousers. Uh, anyway, let's see what you have to say, bro. Well. What do we have here? You must be a new arrival. I am. Let me guess. Fate of the undead, right? Well, you're not the first. Well, I never was. There's no salvation here. You'd have done better to rot in the undead asylum. Huh? Too late now. <sighs> well, you're a bit bleak, aren't here, you? Let me help you out. There okay. Actually, two bells of awakening. One is up above in the undead church. The other is far, far below, in the ruins at the base of Blight Town. Ring them both, and something happened. Brilliant, right? How are you that talking? I don't see your mouth moving. But I have a feeling that won't stop you. So, off you go. It is why you came, isn't it? To this accursed land, the undead? <laughs> Okay, you're a little bit creepy and I don't necessarily like you. Right, so I've been told by friends and fans of the series that this, the Filing Shrine, uh, becomes a mainstay of the series almost like it's a, it's a thing. Oh, got three humanity from that, so that's going to be handy when I need to not be this thing, this hollow thing anymore, this, uh, well not hollow, undead, and go back to being actually human like that guy over there. But something you may miss at the beginning of the game, and I, I did talk to a few friends, and I was like, right, 30 casts of magic, and the base magic is basically magic missile, but it's called soul arrow in this game. Uh, I was like, that, that isn't enough. Like, if this game's going to have progressively longer sections, I need to be able to cast, because I don't, if I'm a mage, I want to be a mage. I don't want to be, I don't want to be the action user, you know, oh yeah, I've got the shield there, but I want to be able to sling magic at people. That's the whole fucking point. What's the point if not? And they said to me, oh yeah, that, that's doable, but it's not going to be going in the direction you want immediately. Because, I mean, you can see a couple of undead standing up there, fucking, or hollows, waiting for me. You can suck a dick, I'm not coming to you right now. And they were like, yeah, yeah, we can tell you, because uh, it's not immediate where you think you need to go. You won't find spells for ages, and you'll be at a disadvantage, because then you'll run out of cast, and you'll feel pressured to do melee stuff, and you shouldn't have to do melee stuff. Uh, if you want to be a, a mage, in this case a sorcerer, which is the archetypal mage in this game. So, okay, tell me what tell me what to do. Tell me uh, what the workaround here is. What what I might miss. And they were like, right, from the Far Link Shrine, look directly in front of you. You will see a man sitting there in silver. You'll also see behind him, if you pan to the right slightly, a giant fucking raven, the one that probably bore you there. And I was like, ah, yeah, I see it. And they're like, right, walk forward, turn to your left, look down, and you'll see a set of stairs. It's like, ah, or I'm now like, ah, okay good people. I wouldn't have seen them, naturally. And this is not the way we are supposed to go, by the way. Or at least, uh, not initially. Right, there is a woman here. 
She cannot speak. Uh, you can reinforce your essence last with her, but she requires a Farkeeper's soul. I believe that makes you have more uses of your potion drink, which gives you health back. But, you go here, and you go further down. And these were just the quick tips from friends. We're like, okay, you want to do a mage, you need to know about how to get access to equivalent spells. It's just a simple thing. It's like, it. you are right in the fact that you feel hard done by. So, we go on here. The pressure plate takes us down. This is not the area we are meant to be in, and we're going to go from here on out. There is another way, and I will show you, but this is not the way. And believe me, don't. again, I have not played a lot of this game. I cannot tell you a lot about it. So, we go out here. We go down. Okay, there's going to be enemies. Right, starting there. Let's just deal with these. Okay. Luckily, they're all stationary. New Londo ruins, so that's good. Nice. Nice. And of, of course, I'm assuming this is why people see this as easy mode for this game, because you can cast from a distance. But then again, these guys are one to two shots anyway. I like magic. I deal with magic. Um, I'm a little bit... Uh, it, it's weird to me that a, uh, a mage requires a catalyst. Yes, games have had this system in place before. That a mage requires a staff to cast. Um, to me... Well, in this game it's a sorcerer, not mage, sorry. But to me, it's always been like, not being funny, you have the ability to cast magic, you cast magic. Okay, and, th and this is the... Oh, hello. Just chilling there. Moon bathing? Because there's definitely no sun bathing. And this is the thing, you come down here, and you go down this path, specifically this path. And there's a guy in the grate in the wall here. Hello, my friend. Let's talk to him. Hmm? Well, this is unusual. You haven't lost your head. I have not. More importantly, you're free. How on earth? Well, I shouldn't pry. I'm Rickett, the I? Okay. I was once an established smith, so that is... Look at me now. Can you believe it? Eh, I cannot. So we, uh, again, we talked to Rickett again. What is it? What is it? Have you? <laughs> oh, no. Don't worry. I have no intention of escape. It's safe here. I can't bear the thought of going hollow out there. Although, I must admit, I've not much to occupy myself. How about this? I could forge your weapons, albeit with rather minimal tools. I'll show you what made me the best in the Well, I don't require weapons as such, uh, Rickett, but I do want to purchase items. And what I want to purchase is soul arrows again that require uh, 2,000 souls, which I have. And there's a reason for this. I now have 632 souls left. See, I should have... Smithing helps soothe my nerves. Good to know. Don't let me wither away out of idleness. I won't, sir, because I'll be back again. Um, but there was a point to that. This game works on, potentially, as far as magic goes, the D&D set of rules, which is things stack. And that being said, Soul Arrow can stack multiple times. So we'll just take care of these guys, because there's one more thing we've got to get from here, what I was told by a friend as well. And I'm very glad people were here to guide me, because it would help. So E-Stock, yeah, uh, that's not what I was here for. I would ideally sell that, but there's one thing I never never really caught up on. And that's whether you can actually sell normal items for souls or not. I don't know if you can, or are they just yours forever. So we'll deal with these guys. And again, although I purchased uh, the spell of scroll arrows in order to... Excuse me. Um, in order to increase my amount of charges, as you can see, I still only have 15 left at the moment. There's a reason for that, because it does the very Dungeons & Dragons thing of... Go rest at a bonfire in order to equip spells, which is fair enough. Right, water is deadly to the touch. I'm just going to let you know that now. Now, I've been told to come out here because somewhere out here, I believe it's over there, you can see that bright light in that little corner chunk of building. There is something called the Soul of the Firekeeper or Greater Soul of the Firekeeper. We need that. 
we need that. Uh, we can happily die after that or just escape. I choose to escape because I want to I wanna at least keep the 700. Yeah, because these things, I can't kill these things. Oh, shit. Shit, shit, shit. Oh, motherfucker. Why did I do that? I didn't mean to roll into there. We need to take the next path. So I've lost 700 souls, but I can come and claim them back. And I will come back down there because we need, we need that soul. So we've got a 10 Estus Plus. We've got a 30 souls back. Let's just, uh, let's just head back down there again. We'll have even more souls because the enemies would return. So yeah, let's uh, let's do that thing. The most important thing. Oh, actually, I should show you guys the reason I even went down there. Really, was for this. The whole point of the whole thing was well, you get a bonfire, you go to a tune magic. There we go. And look at that bad boy. We now have 60 soul arrows to cast. And that was the whole point of going down there. Having enough soul and experience points. And I'd like to give a... Uh, I've been asked not to give names, but I'd like to give a, a major shout out to the people who play this game. Major Dark Souls players. Because this has got a hardcore and very diverse community. Um, far beyond myself. Far beyond even the normal RPG gamer, and uh, they, they just wanted to give me a hand. They know what I do and what I'm about, and how I play games and what I want, and they do their own thing as well. To them, strangely enough, even uh, even in this type of game, I am still uh, well. I'm very much considered a noob. So, thank you to you. You know who you are. Thank you for giving me advice on that. Let's go and get this soul, because. Uh, this is going to be handy for us, and we can already see the green soul. Look, it's over there. That's where I died. Well, that's where it put the collection of souls. It's not actually where I died. I don't know if with magic I can hurt those ghost women things. Because I know for a fact they've already told me physically I cannot. But I'm not about the physical. I'm about the magical. So let's see what I can do. So New Londo ruins again. You're sitting there waiting for me to kill you. I don't know why I uh, just randomly cast that. And you can see it's very easy to cycle through targets. And I, I, I can, to a degree, uh, understand why people call this easy mode. But apparently it doesn't stay like this for very long. So we don't even worry about that. Okay, we don't go down that way because we don't need to speak to him anymore. There's a few round here. So, you know, we've already wasted 10... Well, not wasted, but used 10 casts of this, so uh, that's it, that's a thing, you know. So that's why in any given area we or we already know by seeing this in any given area, the amount of the amount of casts we would use to kill just and like you gotta remember also enemies are gonna have magical resistance later. And the magical resistance they have, I mean we might be using ten casts on one enemy, let alone a boss. Right, let's uh let's go and get our souls back. So we'll nearly be at a thousand after grabbing these bags. Let's find that uh, soul of the firekeeper or whatever it is. So retrieval, thank you. So yeah, we're nearly at a thousand. Let's see if magic can hurt these things. It cannot. It cannot. So, oh, you run away, you bastard. So, uh, right through here. Look at how that bridge is. Oh, motherfucker. Yeah, I'm not going to get those thousand souls back, guys. Those guys spawn right afterwards. But we got the soul of the firekeeper, and that is supposedly uh, what I needed. I don't know why yet. Um, maybe there's an option here. Uh, so, what does it do? Uh... Each firekeeper is a corporeal manifestation of her bonfire and a draw for the humanity which is offered to her. The soul is gnawed by infinite humanity and can boost the power of precious Estus Flask. It can be used to gain humanity and restore HP at the cost of losing the firekeeper soul to reinforce the Estus Flask. Yes, we want that. Use the firekeeper soul, yes. Okay. 
I have a... Uh, I, I don't know. I have no idea. So, I don't know whether that's Kindle Bonfire? Not Kindle War Hollowed. So, uh, okay. Reverse Hollowing. So we offer humanity to reverse Hollowing. Okay. And Kindle? Cannot Kindle without, without the secret right. Have no idea what that is. So I thought I made my. Uh, I don't know. I thought I'd done something there. I thought I'd. Uh, well, I, well, you saw me offer up the uh, the thing at the bonfire, the greater thing, to make the Estus Flask bear. I don't know if you then have to kindle the bonfire, and therefore you need the secret right in order to do so. Um, I'm going to take a quick trip one more time back down here. Uh, everything's been 100% successful, so I've been very lucky. I've now died twice, so you can put that on the kill count. I'm not going to be able to add that into the video. Uh, both times were almost were more or less purposeful. Uh, the last one, I wanted to see if I could get back. I want to see if my last souls are left. I mean, I'm human again now. That's good. I mean, the guy doesn't look any better. That is fucking uber gay. But uh, I want to see if my souls have been left in a more accessible place and then I can run back or at least get closer back so I'd like to level up just a little it was nice getting 60 casts of magic uh, for the 2000 cost but I, I would like a little more I'm not gonna lie I'd like to be able to level up intelligence because I'm a bl I believe in this game intelligence is the stat like it is in many other games for at least casting so okay let's kill these guys again there's there, there's nothing wrong I'm sorry this is a little bit rinse and repeat but uh at the moment that is what is required for me so I believe the 04 over there on the top left of the bar is how hum many humanities I currently have within my possession and again other than giving me a little boost to life and the fact that I am human again now which means uh, maybe an EXP boost slash life boost uh, I don't believe it does much else I believe everything is just a little bit natively stronger. So I'm no longer undead. I am re-dead, as it were. I am back to myself. Uh, yeah, and uh, the uh, the whole thing with undead and living is it, it's all down to humanity. And I believe you can only all do it at a bond. You can do anything like that and restore your humanity at a bonfire. I'm not 100% sure. Don't quote me on that. Because, again, I really don't know how to play this game. I'm just winging it. As the moment I'm hoping to discover and explore and get better as I go in. Okay, where is the green? I can't see the green. I can't see my souls. It's a pain in my ass. I was hoping there'd be. Uh... Okay, that didn't help. I think mean, there's a corpse in there, but that did not help. I was hoping. Oh, there is something with this though. A tr transient. Curse, don't say. Oh, it is all the way over there. I want, I want to be able to get it. I really just want to make it back. I know we're not meant to be here. Yet. Oh, it's near the steps. Yes, I can do this. Nice, 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 nice. All right, fuck you, ghost lady. I thought magic would be able to hurt them, but clearly not quite yet. Well, not the same. Yeah, fuck you with your long old arms. Right. Nice. Right, she can come through the walls, and her friend can as well. Good, good. Alright, let's uh, drink up, because she done half bar of damage. Right, let's get the fuck out. Right, uh, not that way, this way. <clears throat> okay, beautiful, beautiful. I can go fucking level up and get out of this, this really dreary, horrible, depressing place. And I know, I, I've seen enough videos to know people have raged at this game. I know this is not the worst. I know this what this and I'm taking a really calculated and like slow slow start at this, like to be prepared. So uh yeah. Right, we've escaped. I mean they could try and follow us all the way up here, but by the time I hit the bomb for it, oh shit. Kind of overpressed that button a little bit, did not actually expect that. Anyway, let's go back up. They're not coming up here. This elevator's just at the top now. So yeah, I went with a uh, 
a little bit of an emo flick like a Leon S. Kennedy style from Resident Evil Hair. The game auto-saved. Small bit there. And, uh, yeah. Kind of with that standardised young mage appearance or young sorcerer appearance. So we're back to the Phalanx Shrine. Uh, I need to get a new set of armour and that as quickly as possible. But this, this whole thing has been the setup to what comes next. Uh, uh, reinforces the fire keeper's soul required. Oh, I wasted it, didn't I? I wasted it. It wasn't meant to go on the bonfire. It was meant to go on her. There you go. Lesson learned straight off the bat. Why did I forget about that? Why did I do that? There you go. Anyway, let's level up. And uh, if you go to not initialize, that's ridiculous. Um, as way well, back explanation. So obviously my name's Exus, as usual. Character level is three because I haven't leveled up at all. So your standardized character level as a sorcerer is three anyway. Re souls I have required souls to make one stat level up because it's all about stats. There is nothing else in this game. You don't auto level. As soon as you have the required amount of souls, you can put one stat point into whatever you want. So vitality parameter that determines HP. Attunement parameter that determines number of attunement slots. That's also for casting. We will get to that later. We have 15. And I believe we have three attunement slot slots. So you need five stat points in every attunement every time put into attunement to acquire one attunement slot. At least that's what it's saying to me here now. Uh, endurance. Parameter determining stamina, equipment load and resistance to bleeding. So mainly those two I get out of there are the equipment load and stamina. That mount I am going to be able to roll and do standardized attacks. Strength is obviously the power requirement to wield weapons. Also boost weapon attack. Dexterity, the parameter to wield advanced weapons, i.e. finesse, something that's a little bit different. Also boost weapon attack. Resistance, parameter boosting defense and resistance to poison. Intelligence, which is one, one I'm going to choose. The parameter to, uh, required to wield sorceries, also boost sorceries and magic weapons. Faith, the parameter required to cast miracles, that is something a cleric, or I'm not sure what they're called in this game, but a cleric type or white mage, or something that would do undead specific damage in other games. I don't know if that's the point here, but that is what that parameter is. Also boost miracles to divine weapons and humanity, number of black sprites within one's bosom. Symbolizes human nature and determines item discovery and resistance to curses. So there we go. Uh, so I'm going for intelligence, and there is also going to be attunement. I'm going to start putting stuff in, but intelligence for now. So, one, I can't put anything in anything else because this game has a very, what I would consider, fair leveling system. Which is, although, if I take that back out, it would require 707 souls for me to put one stat point into that. If I do that, the next thing, regardless of it being less or higher level than what I have for intelligence, which is now my highest, requires slightly more souls. Each level, regardless, requires slightly more souls. It doesn't matter what it was before, it now requires slightly more. It doesn't matter if vitality is now an 8. Vitality will still require more than the souls I put into intelligence, although intelligence is over double the level of that. I think that's fair. Something more for each level and each spec point from before. Next time we're going for attunement because we need to start making that little increment. We need to, we need to be able to attune more, and that's how it goes. So that's what I'm going for. I confirmed the reinforcement. I have 585 souls. I'll probably grind off screen just to get those other 200 just to do the one more attunement or another intelligence. Uh, who knows? But next time you guys see me, I will be back here at the Firelink Shrine and we will be ready to move on. Anyway, guys, I'd like to thank you all for watching. I know this is a little bit different from what I've been doing. I need to get back to covering Alien Isolation because that game is scaring the shit out of me. I need to get back to covering Tales of the Borderlands because that game makes me laugh as hard as it is to cry. So I need to do both those things, but Christmas has been a bit busy period. And it's taken me so long to get into this, to get into Dark Souls, or at least do a video on it, for you guys to kind of go, okay... It's time we actually saw this shit, and it's time I broke it down a little bit. It's something I've been avoiding for a while, I'm like, you know what, the world does need to see me doing this, and it needs to realise that it's got to bow down. So, anyway, thank you guys for watching the video. I, as always, have been Lord Exus, and I've had fun playing this, and I hope you guys have had fun watching. And I'll see you all in the next video. In a bit!